shall not pass! <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, I am your humble narrator, and welcome back to a deck building edition of Nightbanes. I believe part 3, in fact I'm sure part 3. My vampire lord is Kasa Bloodfeather. She is able to heal one of her creatures for six, which is absolutely whopping. And this deck is all about equipment and buffing your creatures via equipment. They all have the ability to equip either a weapon and armor, um, except for the vampire cheerleader, who is only able to equip a weapon, as you can see by the two little cross daggers under her attack power. So there's not very many cheap cards. We will start with the one card, the one cost uh, cards, which I have two newly turned vampires. Really, they can get kind of decent if they're buffed properly, and they're easy to get out and get an equipment card onto relatively quick. The two cost creatures, I have the vampire cheerleader, who has seduction, which allows her to basically immobilize an opposing enemy an opposing enemy <laughs> basically <laughs> to immobilize an enemy after attacking them so they miss their next turn which is really nice for whittling them down since she only has one attack but it can be buffed uh, her health cannot though but it is already decent at a five lady of the night well she's not a vampire she is corrupted I do have some a thing for Corrupted in this deck, because uh, it's based more around equipment than, uh, well, equipment and seduction than anything else. So the Lady of the Night also has seduction, and she is able to evade uh, an incoming ability. Oh, and Vampire Cheerleader can shadow step past Lycanthropes, as well as enraging all your all your other vampires to have a plus one attack. Which is really, really nice. Even the Lady of the Night isn't affected. Uh, but Child is basically what I would consider my main attacking force, I suppose, in this deck. She has a Life Leech, which heals her for two after doing attack damage. And then she has the Seduction, of course. And Wolfbane uh, increases attack against werewolves or lycanthropes by two, which is super cool. Uh, and then the three cost characters, I have the Blood Knight, who is the last vampire in the deck. I think I only have two three cost characters, yeah. I don't, I depend more on the two costs for this, it's, the bulk of the deck is made up of two bloodless cost cards. So the Blood Knight has two attack, four health, he has a life leech, which is absolutely awesome, and uh, he heals himself for one, and he ignores toughness. So the two attack damage that he does is going to get through every single time. The Hitman is also a corrupted character, like the Lady of the Night, and kind of the off part of the deck. But he's pretty, pretty awesome. He has a hail of bullets, so every active turn he just pelts an enemy for one, because he feels like it, because he's badass. <laughs> And then his execute ignores toughness. So again, the two damage, uh, attack damage that he does is going to get through absolutely every time. I have a mount that I'm able to use as a shield. This is the Street Hawk Motorcycle, which increases the rage of one corrupted creature by one every turn. Um, so it's random which creature gets buffed, and then the buff goes away after the attack is made but still really useful because if it gets destroyed it adds one bloodlust to all of the creatures that are inactive still so it's good for getting your deck up and running relatively quickly we'll go to spells before the equipment uh, to keep my like this is a relatively bulky team as well uh, health ranging from three on a couple of them, but mostly fours and fives. So I have the blessing, two blessing of the elder cards, which allow me to heal all of the creatures on the board for two. While it's not as 
heal intensive as the beast deck that I think I showed in episode two. It is extremely effective for keeping keeping your vampires up because they will be doing a lot more damage, especially after a couple uh, equip pieces of equipment are given to them. I really like Create Illusion of Beauty. It creates a swing on the board pretty quick. You're able to do two damage and play a creature at the same time, which in a game where you can only play one card at a time is extremely, extremely important. So this is a good trump card. I, if I had more, I'd probably put more in the deck, but uh, it is what it is. <laughs> and then I also have Earthmend to keep all these massive bulky creatures up. So, four damage, although it does hit randomly, it it's extremely useful, especially if you don't want to lose your equipment. I mean, you don't lose it. It can be picked up by the next creature, but you don't want your creatures to die. You want you want the board state, is what, I guess what I'm trying to say. Uh, Immolate is a two damage fire spell, and then it also has a secondary effect of casting... Uh, weakness to fire curse which can hit the same target or two different targets so it could do up to three damage immolate is really important for the flamethrowers which are coming up next but before that the last spell that we have is vengeance which does a flat two damage to the vampire lord opposing vampire lord um, two damage is a lot in this game uh, AI health ranges from about 15 to 20 at the highest tiers, and then player health is only probably 7 to 12 for the player Vampire Lord cards. So two damage from that is extremely, extremely devastating, and if I had more of these cards, I would definitely stick more of them in the deck. I mean, I wish I could. <laughs> There's just not enough slots. Ah. <sighs> I have two flamethrowers in this deck. They have a chance to deal three fire damage to one enemy, and the chance seems relatively high, um, given my very, very, very small percentage, or my small basis for analysis, <laughs> I guess. I would say that the proc chance is around 30 to 40%. I have a life stealer, which gives a plus one to attack, and it also is able to uh, heal for one after the attack is completed, which can also stack with the Blood Knight's Life Leech. It's extremely useful for creating that swing that I was talking about earlier and gaining the momentum. Oh, Lucky Gun, Goldfinger. If I had more of these, let me tell you. <laughs> uh, it deals two ballistic damage to one enemy, which is insane. <laughs> Absolutely insane. And even when you play it, it has a chance to do the uh, two ballistic damage. And then on top of that, it will also add uh, one bloodlust to one of your inactive creatures. And for a deck that is full of two uh, two bloodlust cards, it's it gets the ball rolling extremely quickly. If you if if I pull Goldfinger in the first hand, like I know the game is won basically. Triblade gives a chance for an additional attack. It's pretty useful for taking out uh, just about anything that's in your lane. <laughs> I like the battle suit, not because it reduces one electricity damage, which is kind of err, uh, but it gives one attack and two health at the same time. It's the only double whammy card I have like this, so I definitely decided to shove it in the deck. And the Phoenix Cloak gives a one health, but it also allows you to return from death after being struck down with two health up to three times. So you don't want to lose your creatures, so slap this on one of them, and they'll be sticking around for a long time. I usually like to pair this up with the gun, uh, and even if you get a big creature in your lane, you're usually able to smash it down before it's able to do anything to you. In addition to the Phoenix Cloak, I also have Plate Armor, which adds two health. I have two of these, and it also reduces physical damage by two, which is really, really devastating. So this card, Raw, couldn't couldn't hit through the plate armor. It would need a weapon of some sort to buff its attack. So it's extremely useful um, 
and you can just laugh at the one damage cards. <laughs> then there's reinforced police combat gear, which basically reduces physical damage by one and corruption damage by one. So if you're being attacked by a lady of the night, say, she will do absolutely no damage either. Uh, but child will be able to get through it because she is a vam vampire, not corrupted. So, I will show you what this deck is capable of. It is quite fearsome. Oh yeah, son. I'm going to go ahead and get this newly turned vampire out there. Just because she's able to get up fairly quick. And I'll give her a flamethrower. Because why not? Oh, fart. And now that wolf is out. That's bad, that's bad. We need to get the cheerleader. Yay! Lots of cheering. I hate to use the heal this early, but it looks like we're going to have to. I haven't gotten any weapons yet. It's fine. Everything's okay. That bear is scaring the shit out of me, though. So I'll try and buff this vampire cheerleader with some lifesteal and see if she can't tank through that. Oh, buddy. Oh, she did it. Fantastic. All right, I'm being overwhelmed by creatures at the moment, so I'm going to play another child and see if she can make something happen. I'm so glad that Wisp is gone. Ooh, the Blood Knight's here. We need another child on the board, though. Get him. Ugh. Ugh. All right. I'm going to go ahead and heal this turn. I can take a damage from the boar. And I should be able to wipe that out. Oh, oh, oh. Watch it. I'm going to go ahead and get the, the Blood Knight's going to get taken down. Fart. I guess the, the Vampire Cheerleader. It's not going so well. Hmm. And that frickin' Wisp. But we have reinforced police combat gear. Seven health, sucker. Deal with it. You shall not pass! <laughs> Excellent. So now my creatures are buffed enough that we're able to do some pretty good damage. I'm going to... I'll get another child out. Because they're just that good, aren't they? They sure are. Oh, I'm scared of that bear. I hate it. It's fine. It's all good. We will go ahead and immolate something. Boosh! Boosh! There. And we should be able to get that bear before he's able to get us. Especially with another immolate! Yeah! Yeah! And the chains uh, are also also have hearts on them, if you hadn't noticed. That's uh, the seduction taking effect. I love the seduction. It's so good. I'm going to create Illusion of Beauty just to try and create the swing. And there's a vampire cheerleader. Hooray! Cheer them on, vampire cheerleader. Should I get the bike? Yeah, it's safe. So I've got an additional 5 health now. He's lobbing some heals around, but that's just fine. Ah. Goldfinger! Pa pow trick. Oh, so good. Just turn it right around. I love the gun. I love it. Uh, I'll get the Blood Knight in there. Just because. Oh, so wrecked. <laughs> I I wasn't sure at the beginning, but yeah, this is definitely over. So, friends, this has been the corruption deck, equipment deck, whatever you'd like to call it, for Nightbanes. 
If you did enjoy this game, or if this strategy helped you out, or if this video pleased you in any way, please don't hesitate to like, comment, and or subscribe. I do reply to every comment. I appreciate every like. I love every one of you. <laughs> I hope you guys will join me for the next deck that we decide to do. Until the next time, friends. Bye bye One, two, three, four. Goodbye, goodbye, see you again. Goodbye, goodbye, see you, my friend.